good morning. I'm Pastor Timothy Ferrier, the minister at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Huntsville. I want to welcome you to our service in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, again this morning. This past week, I just have a few announcements for us. This past week, we've sent out uh, two pieces of correspondence to you. The first is a letter from me outlining uh, the continued work of our church. Uh, even in the midst of the pandemic, as our doors are closed, we are uh, certainly not um, absent of work. Uh, we're certainly doing a lot of stuff together. The second uh, is a letter from Session outlining the general response from the congregation to the straw poll taken back in February. We had meant to get this information to you in a congregational meeting at the end of March, and obviously that didn't happen. Uh, but this straw poll was taken just to remind you on the important issue facing our denomination concerning our changing standards on marriage and ordination. So um, hopefully, if you have any questions about that, you're certainly welcome uh, to contact your elder or to contact me or session as a whole through Nancy and Margaret, our clerks, uh, by letter. As I said last week, if you missed it, uh, this, there is work being done to get ready for a director of family ministries and outreach coordinator. Uh, the session has done a lot of work and their committees to get this ready so that as things ease off a bit, we might uh, begin that search. Just to let you know, um, I will be on study leave from today, um, uh, um, May 24th until Monday, June 1st. Um, I want to thank Blake Walker for agreeing to uh, both cover emergency pastoral care uh, next week and also to preach for me next Sunday, May 31st. Uh, Blake's number is in the bulletin along with Ann Haas this coming week um, if there are any issues that arise. I really do think we need to be praying for our families as we will um, as camps and summer ministries have been cancelled um, now that our Premier has made his announcement um, this past week so we can continue to be in prayer for our families and for our camps. I also wanted to just note in our bulletin that there is a notice about NBC hosting the Women of Grace conference virtually. Um, I will allow you and encourage you to go there and get that information in the registration links uh, that are to be found in our bulletin. Our call to worship this morning is taken from Psalm 108, 1 to 5, and it says this. My heart, O God, is steadfast. I will sing and make music with all of my soul. Awake, harp and lyre, I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love, higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be over all the earth. Let us pray together. Gracious Triune God, we thank you for your creation all around us that is the theater of your glory, that speaks whether we can hear and understand or not about your character, your beauty, your faithfulness, and your love for us as part of that creation. From the beginning, you have breathed life into each of us and given us the course of our days. You know each of us before, each one of our days before they come to pass. Teach us, Lord, to rely on your wisdom to take each day as it has been given to us as a blessing from you. We thank you for the increasing warm weather that means we can get out of our houses and apartments even for a little while to enjoy the day, Lord, and to, to see your creation around us. As we come to worship today, may we sing your praises. May we tell of your faithful love displayed to us in Jesus Christ. And may our faltering lips bring you praise and glory. Come, Holy Spirit, and point us toward Jesus. Empower us for mission and drive, draw us outward. Fill us with yourself that through the overflowing relationship with you, that the world may see and know the life that you have to offer. Father, we pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through your Spirit. Amen. I want to read for us from Ezekiel 37, verses 1 to 3 and 9 to 14. Ezekiel's vision comes to the people of God when they are in exile and they're looking for hope. 
The hand of the Lord was on me, Ezekiel said, and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley, and it was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them and they came to life and stood up on their feet a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up. Our hope is cut off, is gone and we're cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the Lord says. My people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open up your graves and bring you out of them. I will put my spirit on you and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. Well, good morning. We're glad that you could join us this morning. And these may be changing times, but we celebrate a God who never changes. He takes the dry bones and makes them come alive. He takes the blind and makes them see. He turns our mourning into dancing. And through his son, Jesus Christ, he gives us hope and peace and abundant life. To God be all the glory this morning. Please join your voices with us.
reading is from Psalm 103. You can either take your Bibles or we will have the words on the screen. I will start in verse 1, and then if you'd like to join Mike as he reads in the following verses, if you'd like to read responsibly. In verse 1 we read, Praise the Lord my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly host, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise, Praise the, the Lord, Lord, my soul. Good morning, church family. It's great to be connected with you this morning. We are missing our time together in praise, worship, and fellowship. Despite these challenging times that we continue to face, I find peace in knowing that we are in God's hands and there is nothing greater than God's love for us. Life at the Higgs House has changed in many ways. As many of you know, we are a very busy and active family. Between hockey and lacrosse, we spend most of our weeknights and weekends running the road for sports. With COVID-19, our lives have slowed down a lot. For the first little bit, it was difficult to figure out what to do with all our time as we are so used to going all the time. This time has made us really stop and notice all of the gifts that God has given us right here in our own little bubble. We have been spending lots of time outside, hiking the trails, exploring our forest, building forts, planting gardens, walking our dog Bower, and of course, playing sports. Lacrosse, basketball, badminton, golf, you name it, we've played it in our backyard. In addition to our time outside, we've been enjoying spending time in our home. We've been reading, playing board games, cribbage is our favorite, doing puzzles, and watching lots of movies. Teaching from home has been quite an adjustment for me, and I'm so grateful for the technology that allows me to connect with my 75 grade 7, 8 students. Learning at home has been an adjustment for Keely and Brady too. Keely's used to having her mom as her teacher, but Brady, on the other hand, is a different ball game altogether. This COVID-19 quarantine has made me realize that I will never teach my son, and I think he feels the same way. All in all, we cannot complain. We are making the best of each day and finding the blessings that God has so richly bestowed upon our family. There is no question that God is working in our daily lives through COVID-19 and continues to be at work in our family. In times of uncertainty, anxiety, and stress, God has brought peace and comfort. We have also been sharing this peace and comfort with others who are struggling. In addition, this time has made us thank God for all of his blessings. Brady would like to share some of these blessings with you this morning. Here are some, here are some of God's blessings. Food and clean water. Our house to keep us warm. Fr 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 friends and family so we can keep connected. Our dog Bauer and our technology. Doctors and nurses so they, they can keep us safe during these tough times. Transport truck drivers to provide us with fresh food on the tables every night. School. Even if it's boring, it can still be fun because it will take you a long way. Thanks, Brady. We are missing our church family dearly. We miss seeing friends and family in the sanctuary, singing praises together, and worshiping our Savior, Jesus Christ. We miss seeing the smiles of our light seekers and the joy that they bring to St. Andrews. We know that we are all in God's gracious and loving hands. We are all his children. Despite this time apart, 
I find comfort in knowing that we are all together in Christ's family and that nothing can separate us from the love of God, not even COVID-19. I would like to leave you with a scripture reading from Romans verse 8, 37 to 39. No, in all of these things, we are more than just conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in, that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let's continue to lift our voices and worship the Lord together.
New Testament reading is taken from Acts 1, verses 1 to 11. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will, baptize, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their eyes, and a cloud hid them, hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking at the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back the same way you have seen him go into heaven. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. My sermon uh, entitled today is, What Are You Waiting For? What are you waiting for? I don't know about you, but this seems has seemed to be like the longest two months of my life. Working from home, not having the freedom to go and do what I want or to see who I want, including many of you on Sunday mornings, including my own parents down in Orangeville. This has been a difficult time for us all in one way or another. I want to ask the question today, though, what are you waiting for in the midst of this? What are you longing for in this time? I know that there are many disappointments for us, for all of us, but especially for our children and youth. As camps and sports and other programs that our kids were longing for and hoping for have been canceled this summer. This will be a very different summer for all of us. For all these reasons and more, I think it's important to ask the question, what are we waiting for? What are we longing for? You've probably heard that there is talk about reopening our society. Maybe some of your longings are as simple as going to see Jeff and Bonnie Harris or, or Becky Campisi for a haircut. Maybe you have more complex longings, like wrapping a grandparent or a grandchild in your arms after a long uh, absence. Maybe it's coming out of isolation and walking without fear again in the sunlight, or simply sitting in a coffee shop with friends, or coming into worship together again. Whatever your longings or whatever you're waiting for, things will not be the completely the same for a long time. Luke reminds us that the disciples were in a time of transition between what Jesus said and did when he was with them on the earth and what God was going to say and do through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in the rest of the book of Acts. This moment for the disciples was a time of waiting and redefinition for the people of God. I wonder if what we're facing now is a moment of waiting and redefinition for the people of God in our day. Are we waiting and ready, ready and willing for our triune God to do a new thing among us? Or are, just we, are we just longing for a return to a way things have always been? You know, the disciples we heard a couple of weeks ago were in a time of transition. Jesus had been crucified and had risen bodily to a new sort of life. He had shown them convincing proofs of his resurrection, taking and eating food with them, showing them his body that was forever now scarred for them. Luke tells us that as he walked with his disciples and as he talked with them for about 40 days, he, he walked and talked with them about God's kingdom and what he was going to do. You know, they wanted to know answers to questions that he was not yet at liberty or, or had the ability to reveal. But what did he do? What did he say to them? He said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait 
for the gift that my father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You know, the gift of the person of the Holy Spirit had been promised in the Old Testament, especially in the prophets, especially in times of discouragement for God's people. We saw Ezekiel's vision of the dry bones, and we heard our God's people complain, right? Our bones are dried up. Our hope is gone. We are cut off. And yet it was in that very moment that God promised the coming of his spirit and a change for the people of God. You know, times might be discouraging right now in our culture, and we are being asked perhaps to wait. How are you when you are encouraged to wait for something? Do you get restless? Do you get discouraged? Jesus says to his disciples, wait, wait. Is that something maybe that God is saying to us today in this time? Wait, wait upon me to fill you with the person and presence of my Holy Spirit, to remind you of the power that raised Jesus from the grave that's yours as you are united with me. I need to mention about the baptism of the Spirit. In the Reformed tradition generally, we view the baptism of the promised Holy Spirit in Acts as a non-repeatable event. In the same way that Jesus as the Messiah, his incarnation was a one-time non-repeatable event. God had promised in the Old Testament that he would pour out his spirit in, in Joel, in Isaiah, in Ezekiel, in Jeremiah. <clears throat> the disciples in the period of the Acts saw the evidence of God's spirit being poured out. You know, in our church, we don't often use the language of the baptism of the spirit as a second work that God does within us after we come to know Jesus. We don't use this language for good reason, we think. Paul says in another place, in Romans 8 and 9, he says, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. When we come to know Jesus, we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. As we touched upon yet last week, the Holy Spirit is the third member of the Trinity and is our present personal connection to the living triune God. And if we don't have that, we're not Christians. We certainly are called on to cooperate with the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We are called not to grieve him with our actions, Ephesians 4.30. We're also called to keep in step with the Spirit, Galatians 5, in the way that we live our lives. But while not thinking that this baptism that is talked about in, in Acts is something that is repeatable for today, yet there is a sense in this time that we are called to wait upon God in a new way, to relearn what it means to keep in step with the community life of God through our unity with Christ, through the ministry and the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. When we look at the church today, pre-COVID, were we just busy or were we intentionally beautiful as Christ's bride? Were we honestly passionate and powerful as we witnessed for him in the world? And that's not in any way to put a guilt trip on us. It's just to ask the questions. You know, the reason for the waiting in Acts was so that the Spirit's presence and power in the rest of the book would propel the church forward that the Spirit's presence would be felt not just in superficial ways, but that there would be a vibrancy of worship and witness in the world. Jesus said to his disciples, you will receive power when, you, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You know, this was not... a uh, something that is supposed to guilt us, but it was that rather a declaration about the church that it would be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not a declaration about what the disciples needed to do in themselves or in the world in their own strength. What are you waiting for? What are you longing for? What are we wanting God to do for our families and for our church 
and for our community at large. You know, we may feel in this time like we're in a valley of dry bones right now. We may really feel like that. That God needs to do something to wake up the church. Or maybe our vision is skewed and he already is at work in waking up his church. I want to begin to wrap up by telling you a story. And it's one that I've shared before. I don't know with this congregation or not, but it's it's one uh, that I that I love to share because I love the 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 reality behind it. Legend has that there was a man lost in a desert, dry, dying for a drink of water, and he stumbled on an old shack, a ramshackled, windowless, roofless, weather-beaten old shack. And he looked about and found a little shade from the heat of the desert sun. And as he glanced around, he saw a pump about 15 feet away, about a rusty old water pump. And he stumbled over to it and he grabbed the handle and he began to pump up and down, up and down, up and down, and and nothing happened. Disappointed, he staggered back and then he noticed by the side, off to the side, an old jug. And he looked at it and he wiped away the dirt and the dust and he read the message on the side of the jug. And it said, you have to prime the pump with all of the water in this jug, my friend. P.S. Be sure you fill up the jug before you leave. So he popped the cork of the jug and and sure enough, there was water, almost full of water. And suddenly he was faced with a decision. He could drink this lukewarm water and live. But if he poured all of that water into the rusty old pump, maybe it would yield fresh, cool water from deep down in the well somewhere. All the water that he wanted, all the water that others might need, as they came along through this barren track of land. What should he do? Reluctantly, he poured all of the water into the pump. Then he grabbed the handle and began to pump. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Still nothing came out. Squeak, squeak, squeak. A little bit began to dribble out and then a small stream and finally it gushed. To his relief, fresh, cool water poured out of the rusty pump. Uh, he drank from it. He filled up his cup again and again with the refreshing contents. And then he filled up the jug to, for the next traveler. And he filled it up and he stuck the cork back in. And he left a little note. Believe me, it really works. You have to give it all away before you can get anything back. Is it possible that we are in a season of waiting? for the next thing that God will do in our lives, for the way that he will pour us out in the community as his people. Are you parched and thirsty and looking for something new? Or are you simply looking for things to get back to the way they are? Because those are two different things. Those are two very different things. What is Jesus calling us to as his people? Are we waiting and dependent upon the spirit of God? Are we a people nourished and sustained by the mission that he wants to have through us to the world? Another illustration, just to offset the one that I've just said, because it's a lot about that is about us and what we do. But I remember walking in Kinghurst Forest over in Bruce County a, a number of years ago now. And there was an abandoned old foundation. Beside this old foundation, there was another pump, a rusty old pump. And the kids in our group wanted to really use this pump They were hot by this point and they just wanted to splash some refreshing water on their faces. They just wanted the thing to work. Some of them tried to lift the handle up and down over and over again to get water deep from the well. And uh, what do you think was the result? They failed. They weren't strong enough until one of the dads went to the pump and began heaving on it continually to prime it, right? The kids got excited at that point because they began to see the water uh, spread out and began to uh, be able, they'd be able to splash some water on their faces. <clears throat> and they were able to draw a bit of water themselves, but not Claire. Claire, I think, was like two and a half. She was young, my daughter. And she wanted to try it. You know, she was about two and a half feet off the ground and it was about another six inches to that, that pump. And Deidre picked her up as that dad again cranked the pump. And Claire laughed with joy and excitement as the water flowed from the pump. And as I think about our Christian lives and our community life together and the work of the Holy Spirit, we and those around us are a lot like those kids. 
We don't have the ability to get the water out of the pump. We're standing beside the ruins of our lives and, and, and all that that means. And mostly we just want to see the pump work. We want to get fresh water for ourselves and so the others around us might be refreshed. We may not spend our time thinking about the fact that without God's Holy Spirit, that we are dead and that we have no life of our own to be able to give to others. We ourselves are called to be challenged to worship God in spirit and in truth, living out of the life that he creates within us, not that we have in our, our own. What are you waiting for? I know many of us are waiting for some of those normal things that we talked about, those good things like hugging a grandchild, like going for coffee with our friends, like being back together uh, in worship. But are you and I longing for something more? I remember there was a song that I loved to sing when I was a teenager and a young adult. It was more love, more power, more of you in my life, Lord. More love, more power, more of you in my life. Are we longing for more of God? Are we longing for a spiritual reset? I love that word that Matthew Rattan encouraged us uh, toward this past week in one of his devotionals. A time of renewing and a time of reset before God. You know, we stand as the disciples did between the times, right? Between the resurrection of Christ and his second coming when he will come back. The, the disciples were told he will come just as you see him go. And we are we longing for that event? When he will finally set things right, when there will be no more crying, no more sadness, no more, no more pain. But you know what? Until then, until then, Jesus through the Holy Spirit continues to prime the pump. He fills us up with his presence and power as we wait for him. It doesn't matter whether we feel that presence or power not or not. You know, there may be times where we feel dry, where God is filling us up and his life is there to be able to give to other people. You know, this will be a very different summer. The question is, will it be wasted time? Or will it be for a time for reflection and growth as the Holy Spirit works on us and within us? Can it be a time of spiritual reset that God uses as we wait upon him? As we seek to listen for what is next for our families and for our Christian community. I have no doubt that as God pours out his spirit upon us, that he will bind us closer to him and to one another. As things return, will we be ready to step out and tell the world about him so that they might experience his presence? You know, he can use us far beyond what we imagine in Huntsville, in Ontario, in Canada, and to the ends of the earth. Do we believe that? But perhaps for now, we are called to wait and to listen and to look for the signs of his presence among us. What are you waiting for? What are you longing for? Let us pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for the privilege of coming before you through the person and ministry of your son, Jesus, and in the power and presence of your Holy Spirit. Though we cannot begin to comprehend who you are in your fullness, we simply reflect your love back to you and thank you for all that you have done for us. Lord, we thank you that you love us and that you desire that we lean into you for all that we need all the time. As we come to you today, we do have some requests, Lord. Lord, in particular this morning, we want to lift up the elderly, particularly widows and widowers who are lonely and are struggling during this pandemic. Help us to keep our sisters and brothers who are vulnerable and isolated in our prayers as the days are long and the nights are sometimes longer. Help us to reach out through different means to bring a message of love and hope to them. Lord, we do thank you for another warm spring weekend as people come up here to enjoy their summer homes in Muskoka, we pray, Lord, for mutual respect, loving and kind relationships. 
Help us, Lord, as your people to take the lead in this. As we see people in our parks or neighborhoods, help us to greet them even from a distance with a smile and warmth. We do pray, Lord, for the health and safety of all our local and seasonal residents. We pray for wisdom as we live together this summer. We also want to lift up our grocery store clerks and pharmacists, receptionists and assistants and doctor's offices. May you by your spirit give those who are becoming weary rest and refreshment so that they may be able to continue to serve with grace and kindness. We also lift up our doctors and nurses, our paramedics, our police, our fire, pers fire personnel, and all those who are on the front lines. We pray for your comfort and strength and peace for those who are exhausted from long hours of working and stressful situations and lack of sleep. Lord, we also want to thank you that ultimately you are our healer. We pray for all those needing a touch from you right now. We pray for, again for those waiting diagnoses so that you would help us not to live in fear or anxiety. We pray for those who are waiting for surgeries and procedures that are long overdue. We think of a number of people in our congregation. We pray that you would use our medical system to bring our, your healing to us. We know that you are a God of many resources and many means. If you want to show your glory in some other way, whether through complete healing or through our discipleship perfected through suffering, may your will be done in our lives. May our hope and trust always be in you, Lord Jesus. This morning, we want to continue to pray for Christian camps and summer ministries as they, in the wake of the Ontario government's decision, May they find ways of creatively ministering to our kids and families this summer. May they still find ways of lifting high the name of Jesus and touching the lives of those who may not know you. Lord, you know that we're eight weeks in with no idea how long this will go. We pray that you would continue to teach us what it means to wait upon you and to walk lockstep in spirit with, in, with your spirit. Lord, may we, through this time, May you lead us into a renewed sense of Christian community, a renewed sense of mission to those around us that need your life within. We pray for all of these things and many others in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Thank you again for joining us today, and we pray that the Lord will surround you with his peace and presence as you leave us here today.
meditation today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen.